God. <laughs> on the mic? Test, yes. T this is Tiffany. Test one, test two. 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 Tiffany, test one, test two, test, 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 test. <laughs> I think so. I think mine was the one with not. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I'm not even on the right page. Blank page. No questions. <laughs> what are you thinking? What are you thinking? <laughs> Project, I think uh, 
and satellite images Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, it's really been such a treat to work with you and Teresa on this exhibition. And what a wild time for museums and artists right now. Um, I'm just going to hop right into the questions and be thinking about that. I mean, you mentioned Teresa's work with in relationship to a chaotic world. What was it like putting this show together in the middle of a pandemic? Um, what were some of the challenges you faced? How did you deal with them? Yes. Um, you can hear me, right? Okay, great. <laughs> so, you know, actually creating this work during this time, I mean, even before 2020, like I naturally feel like I'm, I'm cycling and I'm about me as this woman that I'm depicting within these compositions and her, you know, remaining in a space of movement and not submitting to, you know, being static, uh, despite, you know, so many other things and uh, situations unfolding and revealing themselves. And you know, honestly, when 20, 20, when 2020 first uh, got here, it just felt like it was going to be a year of rebirth. <laughs> and that's just what I felt. And I think team <laughs> was also a year of just like a, a, a lot of shedding, right? And that's what's leading us into um, this year. Is, is it better if I take the mask off? Okay, so it was, it was really kind of leaning and leading us into this year. And for me, I just feel like the work is a direct reflection of the constantly like shedding and ripping and, um, you know, sometimes this idea of harmony, right? And, and that's seen a lot in like the pastel uh, moments within the paintings, but then also this idea of, of using black to actually, you know, be a support, also create space and quite frankly, like ripping um, and, and providing clarity for the composition um, within the woman and the space and, and the surroundings. Um, so it, I don't know, it's was, it was been very interesting, like, you know, making the space and um, the work like within this time, just also just like allowing myself to take breaks, right? Um, and like trusting that process in, in a couple moments. I mean, I don't have an issue with with um, revealing <laughs> a lot of things, and, you know, it, it's in the work. Um, and I'm honestly still processing, you know, what I'm feeling and what the work is, um, because it is a dark, you know, the past six months. Right, yeah. And what is still constantly going on. <laughs> right. So for that, I am proud, but it is very, it's a, this idea is, is you know, this idea of duality too. Yeah, duality and balance. And um, you, I mean, um, Kristen talked a little bit about this in the introduction, but we were just talking about this off camera that you represent a lot of firsts for the museum. I mean, the, um, the platform gallery and your banners outside. And can you just talk a little bit about your process and putting those things together and how the banners and the paintings for this show fit within your larger practice? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to really, this is also a first for me in a lot of it, but also um, the first space where I'm able to actually create this digital work on such a large scale and think about, you know, how does this, um, how does this affect me, but also how does it affect the people that are, are looking at it? Um, I also just feel like how we, how we engage with with public work versus actually coming into something, uh, a gallery space or museum space is, is completely different, right? Mm -hmm. Also, like the idea of how we approach painting versus how we approach design or advertising mm -hmm. is completely different. Yeah. Um, and so that was something that I was just really thinking about um, just in my practice in general, but also like as this being like the first like way to actually bring that together. Um, I feel like the, the digital banners on the outside of the museum pretty much for me acts as, as like a an entryway or a prelude mm -hmm. into the space. Um, still the same subject matter, but in a way that feels very approachable, mm -hmm. that feels um, like the work inside is nuanced and, and intricate and it does feel like a safer space we need to fully mm -hmm. explore. And thinking about the inter interiority of the space of, of the gallery or the museum and the interiority of the subjects that also presenting yeah. um, and your images are all I mean they're so vibrant and complex in terms of its of their layers and the way you use black you mentioned and line really create volume and then glitter and all kinds of other materials that you're using soft sculpture really create the texture and dimensionality right and you've said um, in previous interviews that you really 
um, try to capture the multiple dimensions of black women. Um, and I write about this a little bit in my work. So I'm really interested in hearing you talk more about that relationship between form and identity and exploring the interior that you do in your work. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it really just started with like this idea of, you know, me as a woman and also all, so many other women that received the work. Um, but just like how folks are and just, you know, finding a comfortable language of being like, you don't have to choose, you know, one uh, perspective or one way to identify um, and that you're moving within confidence within mm -hmm. so many spaces and demanding the, the respect others to enter that space in that way um, but also like with, within the work um, especially within the paintings I am thinking about texture like how can I build on the actual layers that I, I'm speaking on that that women have mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, in these nuanced areas so you know whether it's the protruding soft sculpture mm -hmm. that is very erectile in a way, <laughs> which is like this you know a play on this idea of power mm -hmm. or also, another idea of power that pops up in the paintings, which is the scrotum flop. Mm -hmm. So that particular movement, um, some of the compositions, you know, women are kept, are depicted with um, fragmentation. Mm -hmm. Some of the legs will, you know, be floating next to her. And, and if you pay attention, the scrotum flowers will also be surrounding her. Mm -hmm. um, and so in, in some compositions, when she's in search of her balance mm -hmm. and her, her other limbs, she mm -hmm. may not have really found her scrotum flower or is aware of like her proximity to the power that she already had. Mm -hmm. um, in, in other compositions, she is fully formed and um, at, at times the scrotum flower was kind of branded with, mm -hmm. within her skin. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, you know, I'm really just really interested in exploring various ways of the, the same idea, right? Like. Mm -hmm representation of like all these different layers and these complexities and using that with like the idea of color and texture within the glitter um, mm -hmm. and also you know like the juxtaposition of the actual canvases and how some certain things are just like breaking out right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like this idea of like calm chaos yeah 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 no the work is stunning and um, just encourage all of you who, if you haven't seen the work yet in person I mean to really see what Teresa is talking about the kind of protrusions and the the texture and the the, the surface um, the way that she manipulates the surface I really um, encourage you to come and see it in person it's really stunning um, and you're I mean for that reason your work has been getting a lot of media attention lately I mean profiles and features in um, the New York Times style magazine Vogue um, architectural digest um, and you talked a little bit about um, seeing and representing black women and um, their dimensionality in your last response. And given where we are socially and politically, that act is so um, timely and, and even more urgent right now, right? Um, and I um, just wanted to hear you talk about what, what roles do you think art and creative practice play in times of, of uncertainty and upheaval? Yeah. Um, hmm. I feel like it provides like a moment of of clarity and, and also trusting that that clarity can also just be like so many different skewed identities mm -hmm. and like trusting mm -hmm. that language um, mm -hmm. that not everything is figured out. Mm -hmm. Like the work is not a result. Like it's not necessarily an answer. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. Yeah. It's just more so just a, just a remark on particular feelings and it's really to just open up, really just be a force to like open up a, a larger dialogue so we can start to talk, right? Mm -hmm. or, or feel like we're being seen mm -hmm. or um, this idea of comfort or, you know, understanding. Mm -hmm. Like that's exactly how I feel or I feel so many mm -hmm. different ways. And um, that's why I really just try to pack so many things within the work just so that it just has like so many different entry points, yeah. right? Because you might miss something the first time or maybe that thing didn't happen to you, right? right? right. And then you come back and you're like, well, now that right. I like can show up in that way, mm -hmm. um, so I yeah I really just feel like it, it's not it's not the answer. Mm -hmm. I, I don't feel like feel like anything is like the answer. Mm -hmm. Like it's, like it's just one answer, but mm -hmm. like it's like a combination of different thoughts and in places to come to yeah. uh, for understanding. Yeah, yeah. and I, also just yeah. like with the titles too. Like mm -hmm. it's another opportunity for me to yeah, in a lot of ways. Um, practice, you know, poetry and, yeah. and 
sharing in, in all these different forms. Um, the soundscape is another example of sharing, and they all really come together to, you know, really support the same thought. Yeah, right? yeah. I love that you talked about the sound piece because I forgot to mention that, and I realized I'm like, oh no, there's another piece of the um, another um, piece in the show, and that's really, I mean, you talking about there being that the show or the, you know, art making um, in general is not a, it's not resolution. It's not the only solution. It's just a part of black women's bodies or, I mean, whatever the case. Um, so I, I'm, I just, I love the work and I'm, I love that it's here in Delaware, so close to where I live. <laughs> it's been such, it's been just so great um, looking at how the images have evolved over putting the show together and writing the labels. Um, I just, I wonder what's, what's next for you. I know you mentioned some exciting things that you're thinking about working on in the studio yeah, next. I think, um, well, I do know that I am planning to, um, really kind of evolve what I already started here as far as, uh, continuing the conversation between my digital work mm -hmm. and really, um, blending in that, that narrative and that visual language into what I've already created here. Um, you know, look, we're, we're in September. We don't have that much of <laughs> It's September left. already. <laughs> and you know, we can feel like, what's next for you? Like, that's also an right. interesting question. Like, Everybody's asking, what's next, <laughs> you know? what's next for anybody? <laughs> and also still feeling, you know, good pressure mm -hmm. and also, you know, negative pressure, I guess, yeah, yeah. Um, to still, you know, keep yeah, going, yeah, right? Yeah, totally, yeah. And that's what I also like. I feel like you kind of are you're building your work like as you're making it, right? But like during a certain part of that process, the work just takes over and you just mm -hmm. become like this vessel, and it's finishing itself and it's speaking back to you. So I'm I do really believe I'm learning from you know like my own thoughts, but they're not really mine. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At a certain point, and. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are too. Yeah. Um, I think now we might have questions from the audience. Maybe not. Oh, okay, great. I think Kristen has them for us. <laughs> So this is the high-tech high portion of the evening. <laughs> and we're still accepting questions. And, um, yes, we are. Still accepting questions if you want to ask them on the socials or from the auditorium. So the, the first question um, is a really interesting one, and uh, it also relates to something someone else asked me about your work earlier today. So this specific question is about Salvador Dali mm. and whether um, you saw that artist as an influence on your work in any way. And I think I'd like to sort of extend that out and frame it in the context of what, what I was asked, which is, do you see yourself fitting into kind of a revival of symbolism? Mm. Oh, interesting. Um, just sort of out there in the art world. So I'm going to, I'm going to repeat the question because I'm not sure if you heard Christian. Kristen, I'm, I'm yes, mic, so yeah, I'm Kristen sadly is not mic, but I will re repeat the question. So Kristen said that uh, there was a question about um, um, Teresa's work in relationship to painter Salvador Dali, um, who was early 20th century surrealist. And Kristen wanted to extend the question to um, think about whether or not Teresa's work uh, could be considered a revival of surrealism in the present day. Did I get that right? Yes. <laughs> Well, um, I definitely went through a phase, right, where, like, I was, like, upset. Yeah. <laughs> went to his museum and figures in Spain. Um, but, you know, I have, um, okay, well, it's multiple questions. Do I feel like it's a revival of surrealism? I feel like it's a combination of so many things, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I feel like that's very apparent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Working is like this this idea of abstract figuration, right. uh, surrealism. It's 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 so many things, mm -hmm. um, and I think all those add to the conversation. Mm -hmm. All those references add to this moment, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what it is to be um, a millennial today, right? Right. You have all these references, but also knowing the references, also realizing that mm -hmm. power in mm -hmm. the idea of starting and ending with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Not to say that those things aren't important or I didn't absorb them, yeah. right? Yeah. But I'm really just trying to focus on yeah. starting composition, starting language, uh, mm -hmm. and, and really just having these conversations with myself. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's really important to, to think about. I mean, the access that we have to these kinds of references and citations, but to also just claim space for your own work and to realize that um, that you're doing something beyond what even the surrealists were doing, right? I mean, you're insert, inserting converse, um, inserting imagery and ideas and concepts about black womanhood that weren't taken up in the same, certainly not in the same ways, if at all. Um, and even in figure, in figure painting in general, more broadly, right? So um, I think that the association with surrealism is apt in terms of the graphicness of your work, but maybe not so more in, in terms, not so much in terms of like being derivative of a certain kind of movement, right? Like you're yeah. doing something much wider. Yeah. 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 It's like it's, it's noted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's noted. Yeah. 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 Do we have anything else? Yeah, we do. Uh, I, just, I mean, I know it's hard to hear me, but I just, to build on that, one of the conversations that Teresa and I had, you know, was in a way was she sort of going back into the history of abstraction mm -mm. and um, as a female artist, sort of dealing with the female subject in a way mm -hmm. that is much more empowering and mm -hmm. nuanced than um, if we look to the early early 20th century abstract artists who are male dealing with female subjects and really reducing their female subjects to something that was symbolic yeah. or, or objects. Like, yeah, right. I mean, in the way that fragmentation works in those um, is so different, right? It's very much about like the objecthood of the female body versus what you're talking about in terms of sub subjectivity and it's very different. Yeah. So yeah, that's that part, right? <laughs> the interior, like the deep yeah. thought, like yeah. you can't access yeah. that. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's why we have time. <laughs> yes. So Kristen, Kristen was saying about um, Teresa, what she was remarking in terms of working with Teresa and really um, getting a relationship or uh, um, seeing the relationship between Teresa's work and, and going back to early abstraction, not even just surrealism, but other abstract painters um, and image makers in the early 20th century and saying that um, those were largely male artists and white male artists um, and dealing with the female body in, in very different ways than what Teresa is doing. And, and this next question sort of relates to um, to the process of abstraction. Uh, the question is, since your paintings are so abstract, do you ever find yourself getting lost in the process? Ooh. So the question, so before Teresa answers, sorry, I just want to make sure that everybody hears it. The question is also related to the process of abstraction and whether or not in working in abstraction, does Teresa ever get lost in the process of making? I think it's just case, it's painting by painting, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you start something and you're like, I'm only just going to build this background, and then I'm going to do these architectural <laughs> elements, and you know, like this idea of these checkerboard patterns kind of like exploding mm -hmm. and decompressing, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to do the figure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's, at times that really works, and at other times I completely flip it, and I'm like, I'm starting with the figure, mm -hmm. and I'll build everything else around mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And at sometimes that that really feels like the thing. I how I work, I'm realizing it's just a reflection of just like really just who I am, yeah, right? Yeah. Like I am sporadic, the work shows <laughs> in, in that way, and I don't follow one mm -hmm. one rule. Mm -hmm. Um and, and that's what I was kind of speaking about before, like the work really I may have like so at this point I really do pride myself in like having like this like bulk of things that I feel comfortable yeah. that I can pull from. So at a certain point I'm like Okay, does it have this texture? Mm -hmm. does, it, does it have these references? Does it have this frozen flower? Mm -hmm. um, and then it just becomes where can I put it in a way where it still and it has a strong conversation with the central figure? Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, like the importance of that just really kind of rotates based off of each painting. Yeah. Um, and I really just just listen to the work like as it's going. Um, and if it needs, yeah. needs more, it needs more. Um, I do feel like this is something I haven't quite figured out, but it's just like the idea of like when it when to stop. <laughs> you, still, you just always know right. like, when to stop. I don't know how. <laughs> You're like, no, there's a billion things here, but one more right. thing. One more thing can fit. <laughs> too much. And the answer is you're done. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, I love hearing you talk about how intuitive your process is. It's really, yeah, and it makes sense. I mean, even one of the things that I was thinking about when I was writing some of the wall labels was like how the interior, how the architectural elements of the of the work make these kinds of, some of the images are like these kinds of quadrants in the background that are also kind of like, look like interior, if not domestic spaces, like whether it's an apartment, like the patterning, it's like wood paneling or 
old school, like 50s Americana tile on the floor. Or like, it, yeah, right? exactly. Like, what is yeah. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> what is life? Okay, do you have any more questions or should I go to this one? Okay, so we have a question from our auditorium um, for Teresa. Do you feel your work is about expanding the black gaze versus centering or responding to the white gaze? Oh, we have a mic situation. Okay. Do you feel, I'm going to read how you're navigating the world and how you see me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Though I know you'll, you'll navigate the world and you'll see me. Right. That's just really not the focus. Right. It's not your primary concern. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. So, um, this is, here's a question. You have said that intimacy is a part of your work, mm-hmm. and in this entire project here at the Delaware Contemporary, there are some smaller pieces which we can, you can <laughs> see right now. If you come to the gallery, you can. Um, the scale that we see next to us in Austin so in front of the building. So mm. we talk about capturing intimacy at those different scales. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I, um, I will repeat the question because this is, I love this question. Um, uh, Kristen asked Teresa, um, or prefaced by saying that Teresa um, has spoken about her work in terms of intimacy um, and how she um, creates the figures and their relationship to other elements of the paintings. Um, and it, you can't see all of the work in the, sh- um, in the show right now because of the static um, camera, but there's other smaller pieces and then there's these really large monumental banners outside. And then of course the work behind us. So um, Kristen has asked Teresa to talk about um, how, how she captures intimacy at these different scales in the work. That's a really good question. <laughs> it's a great question. I love it. I'm like, yes, I want to hear your answer. <laughs> <laughs> and I was talking to um, someone else earlier who's also a painter. Um, and I was just like, yeah, I'm just starting each one the same way. Well, I'll say for the pink thing. Mm-hmm. The design, the, mm-hmm. the banner, the brand. <laughs> um, so I'll answer it separately. As far as working on the smaller paintings versus the larger paintings, I really handle them in the same exact way. And I, I feel like it sounds a bit strange. Um, but once I realized I could tap so much <laughs> into like a small painting, mm-hmm. and because it's also about the idea of like messing with you and just like right, right. being constrained, right? Yes. In such a small space, yes. like all this tension. Yes. So like that's also the point. Yes. Um, mm. and the, this idea of like working out, right? Yeah, yeah. So, actually, for like the smaller work lends a different um, feeling of intimacy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say, throughout all of the work, um, eyes is something that's yeah. really important to me. And the central figure's eyes are really um, usually depicted in like this like surprise, mm-hmm. like kind of motion. And then if you also realize that there are these like also super intense eyes that are kind of floating behind yeah, her. Yeah. That is this idea of um, a woman's intuition that I'm mm. depicting within each painting mm. that shows up as like this idea of like these eyes and the lip that's kind of flowing around the central figure and mm-hmm. she's maneuvering mm-hmm. the space. Um, so just that composition, that layer composition between the central figure and mm-hmm. This, this other being who is also a part of her that is inside of her but also you not really knowing mm-hmm. how deep it goes mm-hmm. um, as far as like your ancestors that's that's like intimate just right in like that idea right um but yeah there's also so many different like areas within the paintings that, that speak to intimacy mm-hmm. um just like these very specific touch like of the hand mm-hmm. or of like the scrotum flower, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it pops up in so many different ways, but right now I would say my main focus is that relationship between um, the idea of intuition mm-hmm. and the central figure, mm-hmm. um, but then also the idea of the central figure's relationship to, to power and balance yeah. is also very intimate. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then as well with the digital pieces, um, the banners, that's a bit different just because sitting on the computer, right, your hand just moves completely different than, yeah. than when you paint. Like, there's times when I'm painting yeah. and I'm like physically thinking about what I'm doing. And there's other times where I'm just somewhere else and like my hand is just moving. Mm-hmm. But when you're on the computer, you know, using the tool and, yeah. you know, yeah. it's very repetitive and mm-hmm. it just breaks up the fluid motion. So mm-hmm. I really 
I start off with the image and I know what the image is going to be and I follow that image. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. It, it works in that in a different way. Um, but intimate moments really just still pop up in the eyes and yeah. in the same ways, but yeah, it's not yeah. as layered as far as like, the texture or surface. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you really do see that. I mean, that just I love hearing you talk about the different ways that your hand moves in making the different work. It's like or versus, you know, the different media because you can really I mean you you feel the sensuality of these of these works. Like being in front of them, you're like, oh if there's I mean they're so sensuous. Like it's just and energetic and it's like it's a very different kind of um relationship to the work and engagement with the viewer even um, on yeah. the different scales and the different kind of yeah, yeah. the different renderings. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Time? So I think there's just one more question. Okay, one more question. I'm going to wrap up on, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, there, there's a community of art students here in Wilmington and, and Delaware, whether they are DCAD students or University mm -hmm. of Delaware's program. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think it, I think they would like to know if you have any words. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so the last question is, is about um, inspiration, I guess, and um, ways forward. So um, there are lots of art students and design students in the area, whether they're at DCAD or the University of Delaware or any of the other institutions that um, we are lucky to have here in Delaware. And so the question is whether or not Teresa has any encouraging or inspiring or useful professional words or for as, as aspiring artists and designers. Yeah, I really do feel like if I didn't spend like two years within Wilmington, Delaware, mm -hmm. and literally not having anything to do, <laughs> like three um, Because this is where I started creating yeah. uh, figuration that, mm -hmm. that I mean, eventually it, it evolved, right? Like it started here. Um, yeah, I would just really just like lean into trusting yourself and trusting that it's a process, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just like going to be like this like eureka moment. Like even if you have like that moment, like you still might have other moments of insecurity or doubt. Mm -hmm. And then just leaning into it and finding work with it and not work against it. Yeah. Because it's going to happen. And I think that's the most important thing is this like stay constant right, right. Like, even if you don't feel motivated or even if you're yeah. being praised like just to stay constant mm -hmm. working yeah um yeah and also like do cool projects with your peers like even if it, it's not like crazy pay and like learn how to like write your own contracts even if it's just like with you know your roommates yes and like learn how to like hold yourselves accountable so then yes. when you go out and you're working on a much larger scale you understand what your work is, right? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for all the great questions. Thank you, Teresa, Kristen, Delaware Contemporary, our lovely tech staff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we good? Okay.